Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back in with another lesson. Uh, this is inspired by a conversation that I was having with uh, Jewish Questions on my last um, hangout regarding Mystery Babylon. And then we were talking about, you know, um, different races, you know, and ethnic groups and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, which one's superior, inferior and all that, you know. And so um, for people to understand, um, it's Bible prophecy that there's going to be, you know, just... Um, chaos you know variance in the last days and god is bringing it you know and he's going to bring it based on everything that he can you know political ideologies um you know medical um uh race um financial status um religion everything okay he's literally just finding every single way to bring division okay and um god is behind it okay um he's setting you know, uh, father against son and mother against daughter and all that. And so God is behind that. And we have many, many verses that prove that. And so that's what that's a part of, you know? Okay. And so I want to contrast, um, those kind of dialogues with, um, the Israelites, you know, the actual Israelites in the Bible. And so my channel is essentially, um, to warn people that God is going to stand by what he said. Okay. And a lot of things in the Bible, um, are everywhere and obvious, but people don't get it, you know, and then so I just have to, you know, give you fair warning, okay, if you don't get it, then God's going to say, why don't you get it? It's everywhere in the Bible, okay, and then these are some themes that are everywhere in the Bible, and then I'll highlight those, and then, um, you know, you're responsible, you know, to know it, okay, so don't miss the obvious facts, okay, and certainly don't waste my time or your time talking about nonsense, you know, and stuff like that, um, who invented this and everybody invented all this, <laughs> who cares, okay? That's not the way the Israelites speak, okay? And even if we, we're not an Israelite, we should model their behavior, okay? Because that's what people did in the past, okay? They would cleave themselves to a righteous people and then God would essentially give them a lot of the rewards that the Israelites would get, you know? And then they would effectively treat them as an Israelite, you know, according to the law. And then uh, there are certain benefits for that, you know, to do that. And that's no different in the days that we live in now. And it's going to be the exact same in the kingdom, okay? Because the Israelites are going to be the ones that are going to be r ruling the kingdom, okay? Um, the elect, the 144,000, Revelation 7. Um, so that's not going to change, okay? And so it's important to know um, characteristics of them in order that for us to, you know, live like them if we are one or to, um, you know, blend in, you know, with them. And so they don't reject us and that kind of thing. And so because the God of the Bible is the God of the Israelites. Okay. And then I'm going to explain what makes them unique. Okay. And God tells us and it's obvious. And so um, you're responsible, everybody out there for not missing the obvious points of the Bible. And then I'll make it clear. Okay. And so um, don't, um, don't miss the obvious themes in the Bible. First and foremost, God loves the poor. Okay. The widow um the sojourner you know um those that um you know are alone and helpless okay that's a major theme in the bible and um god loves the humble you know god loves the merciful um, god loves those who forgive you know and then peacemakers and um all that kind of stuff okay honest people okay he hates liars okay that's another theme and so there's many okay and so this is another obvious theme because the israelites are the ones that the Bible is essentially documenting, you know, their journey um, from the beginning to the end, you know, and then to the kingdom. So um, understand that, okay? Uh, don't waste your own thought life and certainly don't waste mine talking about nonsense, okay? And um, who cares? <laughs> who's like the superior race? We're going to find out because the Bible tells us who the, the superior race is and they call it a nation, which is the way that the Bible talks about um, groupings of people is by nationality. And um, which is essentially, you know, um, a lineage, you know, and then, you know, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And so um, just know that. OK. And then um, there's a prophecy that they're going to be scattered, which I'm going to read. And so we can't, you know, look at a person and be like, oh, that's an Israelite. OK, just based on the way they look. But um, we're going to be able to tell by their behavior, you know, and that's the point of this lesson. And so um, be concerned about that. OK. In the times that we live in now. There's always going to be a group that's going to say, oh, no, I'm the superior race. And then you're going to find some other simp who's going to take the other side of that and be like, no, my race is superior. And then they're just going to talk back and forth. OK, and just like 
waste each other's time because that's not the, the metrics that the Bible uses, okay? And so you people can go and have those <laughs> debates back and forth if you want, and I'll just make fun of you because you're stupid and go, well, I'll watch maybe for a little bit to see how stupid you are to engage in those kind of discussions. But um, the people that are gonna be drawn to my channel and take anything, everything, anything from my channel are going to cling to these words, okay? Um, because we believe more and more every day that this is the word of God. So first and foremost, um, prophecies everywhere in the Bible, I could find lots, uh, potentially hundreds, that um, the Israelites in the last days are gonna be scattered, okay? And so I'll read a couple here, but I could find many, okay? And um, you can find this, the verse that they're scattered, and then also the verse that reference salvation talks about, you know, salvation occurring across the entire flat earth, okay? Jeremiah 31, 8 is one of my favorite. Um, you know, I'll gather them from the north country on the coast of the earth. And so um, I'll read that one. And so really every verse, and I've done a video on salvation, um, will tell you, you know, will remind you that um, God's elect are scattered. Jeremiah 31, 8, Behold, I'll bring them from the north country, and listen to this, and gather them from the coast of the earth. Okay, so they could be on the extreme ends. Okay, so they're everywhere. And with them, the blind and the lame. Okay, the woman with child and her that travails with child together, a great company shall return thither. Okay. And so not everybody's going to understand what it means when it says a great company shall return thither. Okay, that's only for a few. But um, understand that this is saying and gather them from the coast of the earth. Okay, even gives us clues of some of the people that are going to be involved in that, um, the blind and the lame. Okay, so uh, some people won't even be able to see that Christ is in the sky, but they're going to be taken away. Okay, and um, they're certainly going to be able to see after that. But um, that's all the verses of salvation will say that it's across the entire flat plain. And then there are other verses like this in Ezekiel that will say that God did that, okay? It's beginning, you know, in these times. Ezekiel 20, 41, I'll accept you with sweet savor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you have been scattered, okay? And I will be sanctified in you before the heathen, okay? And so um, God is um, doing the scattering, okay? And then the recombining through salvation, um, Ezekiel 28, 25, thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, okay, and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob, okay? And so, you know, again, there's, I mean, you could, there's a website that I'm on that's literally all the verses about Israel being scattered. So I just read those two. So there's many, okay? So now we understand that um, uh, they're not going to look one way, okay? based on, you know, their, their uh, complexion or like their physical features or have like a mark on them. Oh, that's an Israelite, okay, or something like that. You know, they have green hair or anything like that. So that's what we know, okay? And this was many, many years ago. So, you know, this is a process, you know, to have them, you know, fill all these different lands um, across the entire flat earth, okay? And so um, there's no one distinguishing characteristic, you know? And then one um, major clue of where a group of them will be is that they were brought into slavery in America, okay? And so just know that. But then we're going to also read about another group that are not in slavery, okay? And they're, in fact, they went to a distant land so they can obey the law because they will never go into a place where they can't obey God's laws. And so those are different judgments, okay, for different groups of Israelites, okay? And so there's one extreme, a form of incredible enslavement in America. And then there's another group that I'll read in Second Ezra that um, went to a land that's as far away as possible, humanly possible, um, to uh, honor God's laws, okay? And so, but they're both still Israelites, okay? And so just know that. And then there's all the other lands that they have potentially populated. So um, that's the situation that we have, okay? And so that's a biblical fact. That's not um, speculation, okay? That's rooted in the word of God. So now let's talk about, um, let's get into the characteristics of these people, which we can't identify physically, like, hey, there's an Israelite. Now let's get into how we can identify them based on different things. Psalm 147, 19 to 20, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Okay, he showeth his word unto Jacob. So this group is now gonna be able to understand God's word, okay? They're gonna understand it at the deepest level. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So they're gonna understand that uh, what's going on with them in the entire world is a judgment from God, okay? So they're gonna be have essentially, you know, um, uh, the inside, um, reasoning and logic surrounding why God does certain things, you know, and then his statutes, which can represent also his law, then they're the ones that will honor his laws. Okay. 
And so now we're going to get some clues. Okay, well, so if you were to come across somebody, this is where we would start, you know, are you an actual Israelite? Then they would have to understand his word, his statutes and his judgments. Okay. And then they would fundamentally understand that everything is a judgment from God. We know that now. Okay. And so uh, we're, we're getting heated up here. Okay. Verse 20, he shall, he hath not dealt so with any nation. Okay. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Okay. And so this is going to be a group that are going to know his judgments is the way that God operates, the way he thinks. Okay. And then the way that he um, rewards people and penalizes them. Okay. And so that person, if you were to come across somebody who has a, a incredible insight into that kind of thing, there's a good chance that they're an Israelite. Okay. Because of this verse in Psalm 147, they just like randomly figure it out. Okay. God told them that. Okay. They have not known them. Okay. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Okay. Praise ye the Lord. So I know within 10 seconds of talking to somebody, whether they're a candidate of, of this based on the things that they talk about. Okay. And they want to talk about. Okay. And then um, how um, fervently do they cling to the word, his statues and his judgments. Okay. So we have clowns like end times teacher and all these um, Hebrew Israelites, the leaders, uh, they'll be very quick to say you can't eat pork, you know, but then there's all these other laws that they're like, nah, I don't know, no big deal. <laughs> no, not a problem. Okay. Without, you know, I'll read Leviticus as well. And they're like, nah, no big deal. You know, whatever that maybe, maybe not. And all that they're wishy washy. Okay. So these people are actors. Okay. And so right away, we know that they don't understand the word, his statutes and his judgments. Okay. Cause that's only for, for a group of people. And then um, let's also figure out here how big this group is too. Okay. So understand that. Okay. That's very important. Now, Deuteronomy 7, 6 to 7, for thou art at holy people. Oh, okay. So now we get another clue. This group is going to be holy. Okay. Unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Okay. Above all people that are on the face of the earth. That's an indirect flat earth reference. So they're going to, they're going to know the earth is flat. Okay. They're not going to teach that the earth spins and flies through the atmosphere. Okay. Um, like the heathen do. Okay. And so um, uh, we know here that uh, they're holy. And that's uh, why they'd be chosen, okay, to be a special people, okay? Why are they special? Because they're holy, okay? Verse 7, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number, okay, than any people, for you were the fewest of all people, okay? So it's a very, very small group of people, okay? And that's in Deuteronomy 7, 7, 14, for God's elect, okay? For you are the fewest of all people. So all you dummies that come by here saying, oh, no, God would never do that. He would never do this narrative right now. It's not time yet, okay, because there's too many people out there. God hates a majority of people on this earth. He only cares about this group of people. And what, are we, what do we read here? For you are the fewest of all people, okay? So you could populate this group with a, in a relatively small city on earth, okay? And so God does not care about all those other people. Why? Because they're not holy, okay? And then they wouldn't be chosen. And then they're not a special people, okay? And what makes them special is they're holy and they honor God's laws, okay? Like I read in Psalms 147, okay? Um, he showeth his word, his statutes, and his judgments, okay? And so they, he doesn't show that to them like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll take this as an FYI. No, they live and die by those things, okay? And I'm going to read that in Second Ezra. So uh, don't, I just don't want people, this is all I can do is warn you people, um, you guys come by my channel and say that I'm mean or whatever, but God's going to hold you to these words, not the words that I say or the words that you're hearing in your head or all the stupid people that you listen to, you, all the majority of the retards on YouTube. He's going to hold you to these words, okay? How come you didn't know this, okay? He's going to hold me to these words as well, and so I use this as my standard, okay? Not you dum-dums that come by my channel don't have a freaking clue what the hell's going on, okay? You people are just a clown show just for me to laugh at, okay? I'm going to uh, understand that these are the words that God's going to look down on his earth and then do things. Okay. His judgments. Okay. And so he's going to return based on the cry of these people. Okay. The souls of the just complain continually. That's what it says. Okay. In the Bible. Okay. And so, um, and these are the people that are going to be complaining because these are the souls of the just. Okay. The Israelites. Okay. Okay. Um, because they're a holy people, like I just read here in Deuteronomy, okay? And so now let's put a, put this into motion. Let's see the way they behave, okay? Uh, Second Ezra, these are real Israelites, okay? Not these actors that you have on YouTube, okay? Um, Second Ezra uh, 1339, as for you seeing him gather to himself another multitude that was peaceable, okay? So now another descriptive term for them, they're, they're peaceable, okay? 
wherever they are, there's going to be peace amongst them. Why? Because they're honoring the law, okay? Because uh, when you honor the law, you have life, okay? And um, God can then visit, okay? And I suspect he visits this group regularly. These are the nine tribes that were taken away from their own land into exile into the days of King Hoshea, whom Shalmaneser, king of the Assyrians, made captive, okay? He took them across the river and they were taken into another land. But they formed this plan for themselves, okay? They think for themselves, okay? Not you dummies who come by here and say, oh, what did Mark Sargent say? What did Arwen say? What did all these retards say, okay? They think for themselves, okay? Uh, listen to this. Um, but they formed this plan for themselves. Who do you think inspired that? God did, okay? Um, that they would leave the multitude of the nations to hell with them, okay? Uh, and go to a more distant region where no human being had ever lived. They're like, let me find a place as far away from these um, demons as possible, okay? Um, so that they're at least they might keep their statutes. Oh, wait. Well, that's interesting. That sounds familiar. Um, let me read Psalm um, 147. Shocking. Okay, I know for you dummies, the Bible is actually consistent. This is amazing, right? He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments unto who? Israel, Okay. And so, wow, that's incredible. So we have these nine tribes and uh, they might keep their statutes, okay, that they had not kept in their own land. Okay, so they're like, wait a minute, time out. Uh, we're now uh, feeling this pressure to be made captive, you know, by the king of the Assyrians. And then now they're saying, okay, they're not allowing us to keep these statutes. So guess what we do? We get the hell away. Okay, bye. And all that kind of stuff. And that's what we're doing. Okay, whether we're Israelites or not, we're doing the exact same. We're modeling their behavior. Okay. Okay. And then so we can essentially blend in and God would like be, look down and be like, oh, okay, they're doing the law. Okay, whether they're Israelites or not, I'll allow them to continue. Okay, because they're at peace. Okay, and that's the what we do. Okay, and then we could be essentially grafted in. Okay, and it's almost like you wouldn't even recognize. God obviously recognizes, but I'm speaking this um, from a spiritual vantage point. God's plan, okay, from the highest level. <clears throat> Those people who rehearse these acts, he'll have no issues. He won't disrupt that. Okay, don't worry about that. Um and so, so that at least there they might keep their statutes they had not kept in their own land, okay? So they're moving to a distant land so they can now honor God, okay? And he's like, let me help you, okay? And that's what we're asking for right now, which is salvation. And they went into this narrow passage of the Euphrates River, narrow passage, okay? Um, and then that's uh, symbolic and metaphoric for uh, it's not many people, okay? It's a very narrow road to this form of righteousness, okay? For at that time, the Most High performed signs for them and stopped the channels of the river that they had crossed over. He's like, let me help you, okay? Because you want to honor God, okay? Verse 45, through the region, there was a long way to go, a journey of a year and a half. They'll walk a year and a half to get away from these ding-dongs who are trying to keep them captive so they can't keep God's statutes, which are more important than anything, than their own life, okay? These are the real Israelites. And that country is called Arzareth. Listen to this, verse 46. Then they lived there until the last times. What does the last times mean? <laughs> it's all funny, but like we have people who are teaching that that's America. These actors on, on YouTube, like End Times Teacher and all these demons and uh, Sakari and Tahar, Tahar and all these uh, dum-dums. Uh, do, they, do they have any uh, sense that they behave like this? Like even like one iota? Are you kidding me? This is what the Bible says. The Bible, God's going to hold you to Why wouldn't you just believe what the Bible says? Why are you believing all these other dum-dums on YouTube? Then they live there until the last times. Okay. How plain is that? Okay. And now when they are about to come again. Okay. The Most High will stop the channels of the river. This is in Revelation 16. I highly recommend people watch um, my uh, live stream where I link Second Ezra 13 with Revelation 11 and 16. Okay. It was like a couple hangouts ago. The Most High will stop the channels of the river again. Okay, because he did it to help them get there. Okay, now they're going to return so that they may be able to cross over. Okay, therefore you saw the multitude gather together in peace. Okay, but those who are left of your people who are found within my holy border shall be saved. Therefore, when he destroys the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he will defend those people who remain. Okay, and then he will show them very many wonders. And that's the last 45 days for people to understand the 1335 in the book of Daniel. And so um, those are Israelites. Okay. And they're in a place right now on flat earth that uh, that no man has ever lived. And guess what they're doing? They're honoring God's laws, okay? And so, and they're waiting for the last times, okay? For these miracles, okay? And then ultimately for their soul with, to, with salvation, which is that God keeps the soul outside of him preserved for the kingdom, okay? That's fundamentally what salvation is. Every other soul that's not saved gets collapsed back to God and is destroyed, okay? From the most high and will not be a part of the kingdom, okay? 
And so this group is, of course, going to be a part of the kingdom, okay? Because they're honoring God's laws, okay? Because they didn't care about what the, the, um, the Syrian king said. Or just like now, we don't care what Biden says, okay? These people are disgusting people, okay? And so um, they're like, no, we're getting the hell out of here, okay? And so these are the Israelites, okay? Where do you see that on YouTube? I haven't seen it yet. Where do you see this kind of behavior, okay? And so just know that the Bible is for a very, very small group of people. It doesn't mean that's for me, but just know it's for these people, okay? And then if we don't model these behaviors, it's not for us, okay? There's no, there's no middle ground or anything like that, okay? So don't get confused, okay? And certainly don't bring a nonsensical talk to my streams, okay? If you understand these words, model them first, okay? And then you you won't even think about in along those lines, okay? And this is me too. There were times, like I said in that hangout, I used to like wonder, oh, Indian people are so great or these people are, are hurting the humanity and all that kind of stuff. Now I know who's hurting humanity. It's everybody who goes against these words, okay? And is not spiritual, okay? So if you're involved in any kind of physical, carnal comparison or let me debate you and this and that, then you're part of the problem, okay? And so just know that. And um, you're, you're uh, acting according to the flesh and that's not this group, okay? This group uh, cares about God's statutes. You know, they're a spiritual people and they have confidence only in God, okay? Not in themselves or their abilities. They couldn't stop the channels of the water and just find a place to go. God had to do that, okay? All they had to do, which is a lot, is to decide I'm not going to honor that king's um, decrees because it goes against the God's statutes, okay? That's the decision they're made. And then they made a plan. We got to get out, okay? And then they call on God, okay? And guess what God does? He gives them a narrow passageway to go and to be able to do those things that please him, okay? And we're promised of that all the time, you know, that God will give us a way out, you know, that we will not suffer temptation beyond that we can handle. So uh, that's what the Israelites do, okay? And so just know that. It's not these actors on YouTube. And you're going to be held accountable to what the Bible says, okay? Not all the nonsense that's on YouTube, all these um, uh, Satanists, okay? Leviticus 19.28, you shall not make any cutting in your flesh for the dead. That's for dead people to do that, okay? Um, Nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord, okay? Uh, do you think they'll read that and be like, no, that's... He said that a little while ago. He forgot about that, <laughs> okay? Are you kidding me? These people live and die by this stuff, okay? All of this, okay? Because these are their laws. It's not uh, what's in Babylon, okay? What's in the, you know, penal code, whatever. They don't care about that kind of stuff. They care about what God said, okay? And they don't care about what the Assyrian king says. Oh, just because he made a lot of textbooks and, and has a court system. They're like, I don't care, okay? Um, no, this is what God said in Leviticus 19, 28. And how come uh, all the, quote, Hebrew groups are, aren't quoting this, okay? Because they're actors, okay? Just know that. That's very, very clear. And if you follow an actor, you're going to get what the actor gets, Okay. I'm calling the handful of people out there to wake up, okay? Wake up and smell the coffee, okay, so to speak. Wake up and smell the essence of the Bible, okay? And um, these are the group of people that God cares about, okay? Not these ding-dongs that we see on YouTube. Second Peter, uh, First Peter 2, 9 to 12, but ye are a chosen generation, okay? A royal priesthood, listen to this, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Why are they peculiar? Because they don't give a flip what the government says, okay? They don't care what their spouse says or their kids say or anything. They care what God says, okay? That's a peculiar group of people, okay? Even in the times that we live in now, you don't see that, okay? And so the, this is the way you can, you can find out if somebody's an Israelite in, in a few minutes, okay? Once they see of evil, they run the other direction, okay? They warn as many people are around and then they go that way, okay? As far away as humanly possible. And so where do you see that, okay? I don't. I just see a pe bunch of people talk about nothing all day. Just gibberish, okay? And so a peculiar people, okay? <clears throat> that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness. Revelation 18, 4, come out of her, my people. These people are not going to war and fighting anybody. And all. Why didn't they fight? God could have destroyed all those people in, in um, 2nd Ezra 13. They're like, no, they're, they're get out. Okay, let's get as far away as possible from these people. The times that we live in, we can only go up. I'm not fighting anybody. People are like, they're, I'm going to war. And all. Who are you going to fight? Okay, and I'm not fighting with you people because all you people are stupid. Okay, I want to call on this God and be saved upwards. Okay, and just wave by to you dummies down below. <laughs> That's what I want. Okay. Um, decide what you want um, soon, I would say. Uh, bring forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, okay? 
And that's consistent with Revelation 18, 4. Come out of her, my people. Don't be partakers of her sins. That's what that group in 2 Ezra 13 was doing. Come out of her, my people. Don't be partakers of her sins. And um, receive not of her plagues. And that group in 2 Ezra 13 is not going to experience those plagues. God will protect them, like I just read. And so that's what they get for honoring God's laws. It's a, there's a reward, of course. And so um, just know that. Verse 10, which in time past were not a people, but now, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy. They were under judgment, okay? But now, ha but now have obtained mercy, okay? And this is what we want. Verse uh, 12, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy lusts which war against the soul. Okay? So these people are not going to be about flesh. Okay? And like how much money do you have and like, you know, fleshy lusts and like your skin color and all that kind of stuff. You know, oh, I should get credit for this. We're smarter than you and all that kind of stuff. This group only takes pride in their God. Okay? There's nothing else to talk about. Okay? And so... I test people's spirits when they talk to me and I want to know who, what, who are they, who are you proud of? Okay. I'm asking anybody out there, who are you the most proud of? I'm only the proud, proud of the God of the Israelites. Okay. Because look at all the work that he's done. Okay. And he's still doing, and he's going to do, you know, and so that's who I'm proud of. Okay. And, um, I'm thankful that he has, um, given me an open mind to accept that he is indeed the God of all of this. This is his creation. Okay. And then that's a gift. Okay. <clears throat> That's what I'm proud of. What are you proud of? Okay. Um, I'll read verse 11 again. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. This group are going to be outcasts. Okay. Abstain from fleshy lusts. Okay. Which war against the soul. Okay. And so all that stuff, God's like, hey, if you want to go and debate people about fleshy things, go for it. Okay. Then you're now at the mercy of whatever happens in that debate. God's not involved. Me and the few people who have a functioning brain, I'm trying to convince people to come out, okay? And just watch this movie play out, okay? And that's it, okay? We're not interested in anything of the, quote, flesh anymore. We're only interested in salvation, okay? Which is a supernatural event on a particular day, which I hope to God happens soon, okay? That's all I can say, okay? And so we don't care about all that stuff, okay? Um, and we're in this desperate position and it's a beautiful thing because we're in this position now and God brought us here, okay? That all we can do is cry out for salvation, okay? Which is a matter of the soul, okay? Being preserved, okay? And so that's what's going on. Verse 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Do these Hebrew Israelites sound like they're honest people? Do these YouTubers sound like they're honest people when they only talk about certain topics and then all the nonsense that they like to talk about? Do they sound like honest people? Oh, I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe mystery Babylon is, I don't know. Maybe it's the mark of the beast. I don't know. And all that. Do these sound like people who have interacted with the God of the Bible, according to Psalms 147? Does that sound like, I'm just asking anybody out there who has a brain, do, do those sound like people who, who are fitting in this category? Not to me, <laughs> not to me at all. Okay. I'll talk to them, I'll clown them in my mind, but not to me, okay, not at all, okay? And so um, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. I want people to understand God's elect, they have no guile in their mouth, okay, according to Revelation 14. <clears throat> and so uh, uh, people around them are going to be astonished, okay? Uh, wait, uh, you don't care what the government says? You're just going to speak the truth? Okay, and then, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do, okay? We're going to call a, a spade a spade, so to speak. We're going to call the mark of the beast what it is, okay? And we know what it is based on Leviticus 19.28. The mark of the beast is anything that goes out worldwide that violates God's laws and is required to buy and sell. That's another way to word it, okay? It's the first thing, let me let me phrase that, word that again for you people that are stupid. Um, the, the mark of the beast, okay, is anything that goes out worldwide, okay, that is required to buy and sell, okay, that does not honor God's laws, okay? That is it's a requirement to violate one of God's laws, okay? This is why the mark of the beast is very obvious because the mask is a form of that, okay? It was, the, it was a warm-up. That alone to me was enough, okay? But fundamentally, because that's not an explicit law, okay? Leviticus 19.28 is an explicit law, okay? That is being violated by um, the mark of the beast, okay? 
what we see now and then what people are predicting in the quote unquote future who are all actors okay notice that but that's what the mark of the beast is okay for, for all you dum-dums um, who are still like i don't know that means you don't know the bible okay and then you're obviously not an israelite okay do those people in second Ezra 13 sound like they would entertain what's going on now for a second they would hear the first thing uh, they got a whiff of it and be like oh <laughs> we got to make a plan amongst ourselves okay call on their god and then go okay do they sound like they'll wait around? Oh, let, let's see. Maybe, maybe they'll change their mind or whatever. Are you kidding me? These people are, are smart, okay? A royal priesthood, okay? Uh, a chosen generation, okay? You think they're stupid? <laughs> I think they're ignorant, okay? They're not ignorant of Satan's devices and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so um, that's what the mark of the beast is, okay? And if you can't figure that out what it is by now, then you have to be a Satanist, okay? Um it's obvious okay so like uh, just know that i know what you are okay verse 12 having your conversation honest among the gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evildoers they may by your good works okay which they shall behold glorify god at the day of visitation okay they'll be like oh man okay those people that were taken away were the people that did not give a flip what their government said okay and they didn't even give a flip what their flesh says okay according to verse 11 okay wow uh, we should have listened to them. That's what those. That's what they'll all say, okay? And that's what we would say if we witnessed that. We want to go where they're going, okay? Because l l look at the way these people sound. Do, do these people not sound like people you'd want to be in leadership? Uh, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, okay? Second Ezra 13, what do you think that if you're led by those people, what do you think they're going to do? Cheat you out of your, your money? <laughs> no, let me take half of your paycheck and all that kind of... Does that sound like those people in Second Ezra 13, those nine tribes? These are the Israelites, okay? That's why they're God's chosen people because they don't care what anybody says. They only care about what their God says, okay? <clears throat> Just know that and don't um, forget that, okay? Um, so if we have a group that are chosen, which I've very clearly proven here and I could find many, many verses, okay? If you are a chosen person, if you believe you're one of the chosen, okay? And um, you are in the very least, we want to model these behaviors. Would you not be choosy, Okay. If you're one of the people on this entire flat earth of the small group of people that God cares about and you feel like God has chosen you to accept many, many truths and all that kind of stuff, would you not be choosy about who you interact with, about what you say, about what you put in your body and, and et cetera, et cetera? Okay. And then all the, and the, the air that you breathe, the food that you eat and all that kind of stuff, would you not be choosy? Okay. So God's chosen are choosy people. Okay. I'm very choosy about who I talk to and things that I want to hear. Okay. And so that's why I put a stop to it, okay? And then so if anybody comes on my channel or I interact with you in, in, a, on your, in the comments or whatever, and uh, I don't like the sound of what you're saying, I'm going to make fun of you, okay? And then uh, I won't stop until I'm bored, <laughs> until it's like not cool anymore, not fun anymore. And so I'm very choosy, okay? Because I believe that I'm one of these chosen, okay? And so even if I'm not, I'm going to try and model these behaviors in the meantime, you know, until God decides who's actually chosen and who's taken away. And so just know that, okay? And I highly recommend you do the, the same, okay? If you don't like the things that I'm saying and it's not up to your level, then you should go find somebody else or ultimately go to the Bible and feed yourself with that information, you know? And then be very selective, you know, about what you listen to and what you want to see. God's chosen people, okay, they don't like to look out and, and see disgusting things, violence and evil, breathe disgusting air and eat disgusting food, because all those things are violations of God's laws, okay? Um, they're not supposed to be in a place like that. Notice how in Second Ezra, they went to a place where no man is, no, nobody's been there, so they can start from scratch, okay? They don't want footprints anywhere. They don't want leftover, you know, food dangling and like, you know, dead carcasses, and they don't want that, okay? And so that's why, okay? Because this is a holy nation, okay? They're, they're a pure people, okay? They do not like to see disgusting things, okay? And even if I'm not an Israelite, I align with them. I don't like to see disgusting things. I'm not like you people who are all a bunch of Stockholm Syndrome uh, donkeys who just sit in a garbage can, they'll throw you a mask all day and like throw you a $100 check and a hot dog and you start giggling and love it, okay? Does that sound like these people? They're like, hell no. It's like death before that, okay? And with a smile on my face, okay? And so you people need to figure out which team you're on quick. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.